Good evening, my name is Bruce Montgomery and thank you for joining me on yet another edition of Technology Access Television. Well, today we're going to talk about my favorite subject, small businesses. Small businesses making a go of it here in this city of Chicago, especially in my community. And my guest today is someone who has been absolutely one of the most outstanding advocates and person roll up. She don't even have any sleeves to roll up. So she, her <laughs> sleeves are gone because she's been out there really fighting the good fight for a number of years. And I can only stand back in admiration of the work that she has done on behalf of not, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, Chatham Business Association and Melinda Kelly, they're all about Chatham. Well, you don't know Melinda Kelly. She is all about small businesses over this entire city. And she has put some good ideas in the ears of anybody that will listen, from the mayor to the governor to our senators. And believe me, they listen to Melinda Kelly because she is telling them the real truth about what it takes to run, operate, and maintain a small business in these very challenging times. So I'm very happy that I could have her here today to hear some of both the challenges and the opportunities that lie ahead because both of us are trying to make a difference in the economic climate here in Chicago for our small businesses. And I thank my guest today, Melinda Kelly, for being here. Bruce, thank you so much, especially for that introduction, because I look at you as a person in the trenches with me. That's and true. when you know the people in the trenches, if they say something that you're doing right, we know we're doing it right. <laughs> well, you know, I have to say that, you know, I've been around Chatham CBA for a long time, and, and certainly that's my legacy. That's where I grew up. That's where I was raised. Uh, you know, I, I've been out there and so many people. I never thought that I'd be in this position day where people look at me and say, Mr. Montgomery, <laughs> Mr. Montgomery. You know, I, I, I was a little kid riding my bike down Cottage Grove, let alone being at a business meeting. But I've watched, you know, CBA has had good times and, and quiet times. And when you came in, there was this great legacy here, but when did you know what you were getting into when you took over the reins of the Chatham Business Association? How, how did you, how did they talk you into this? And did you know what you were getting into? Well, to answer the question, I think most of us don't, then it gets in our DNA and we keep going. But uh, I was very familiar with the players at Chatham, the successful businessmen at Chatham. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was brought up by my father, who was also a newspaper man. So okay. they're in the news, in the know, in the community, working with the civil rights leaders of the time. Okay. In addition to my mom, who was very active in the church. And when you put those two together, that makes you an automatically okay. community organizer. All right. How I came to uh, Chatham is in my social service work when I was working for CHA mm -hmm. and trying to get the at-risk youth employed. Their spirit is so entrepreneurial, so innovative. And I knew if I could match them with the spirit that I knew existed with the business owners in Chatham, that there was a uh, easy way for us to get them least compliant on the pathway to home ownership and to stay in those new developments. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know that was part of your background. So it's, it seems like it's just been yesterday, <laughs> but now this is your what year? This is my fifth year. Fifth year at fifth the realm year, of yeah. executive director of the Chatham Business Association. And for those that don't know, uh, CBA is not only a chamber, uh, but you're also a delegate agency, and, and what does that mean for CBA to be a delegate agency? What that means is there are a few of us throughout the city of Chicago, we're a contracted agency with the city of Chicago, and our goal is to help uh, sustain and create businesses in our respective corridors that we serve. So for instance, Chatham Business Association services the 6th and 8th Ward, mm -hmm. and I think that's where some people kind of localize us. But on a broader scale, as you mentioned, before, and you and I have been at the table, actually, we both sit on the uh, city's neighborhood strategy initiative. Mm -hmm. We are brought to the table representing those businesses as well as businesses throughout the city at large, and particularly minority owned businesses. And because we have, you know, we know their challenges, their succession, their successes, and we advocate for legislation that helps them improve the quality of life in the communities that you and I live in. Now, some people, you know, maybe got bent out of shape because they saw you 
uh, standing behind this politician or that politician and they said, oh, you know, Melinda's just up there and doing whatever. But they don't know that the reason people come and seek you out is because you do represent a membership. Mm -hmm. There are people who are paid members of the Chatham Business Association, as hard as that is to get. And they've been paying dues because they wanted representation and somebody to speak up on their behalf. T talk about that side of sure. uh, th that. Yes, you're a delegate agency, but you're also an organization where you have membership and you, you respond and you, you, you report to and you advocate for the best interest of those members. And very, uh, and a membership that's there to articulate what they need and what they don't like. As oh. you and I have been at several of those meetings, this, you know, I always challenge, uh, especially politicians, you know, we are at the meeting the other day, come and listen to them mm -hmm. because they have real good common sense ideas. And then I take those ideas and communicate them on a legislative level and fight for them to get what they need so that they can hire in our community. Everybody agrees that small businesses are the turnkey to the economy. Mm -hmm. They're going to be the first hire in our community. They're the first to train. So it just makes common sense that when you represent businesses, we represent small businesses. We represent big businesses. We, re we have a manufacturing corridor. We have our own radio station. We have our own uh, newspaper true. station. So uh, we have very organized residential community groups that have demands and requests of the commercial corridor. So when you have that mix and that activity going on, you can't help but be active. And I'm, I'm just so proud to represent that community. It's, uh, it's a point of reference for people who need a clue on a state, local, or federal level mm -hmm. as far as what to do to get really good, solid information on what do we need, what are the challenges, what are the obstacles, how do we do public-private partnerships. Um, it is just, uh, it's a, just a hub. Uh, well, I, I think you've been very uh, creative because you said, well, I can go downtown to these meetings and I could go to City Hall, State House, but I'm more concerned about having meetings out in the community. Yes. So you brought Com Ed out to the community. You brought Cook County out to the community. You said, no, you know, I can go downtown anytime. You all need to come out and hear the businesses because I, I don't want to be in the middle. I don't want them hollering at me and I got to come down and holler at you. You need to come out so you can hear right from them the concerns they have about doing business with Com Ed mm -hmm. and doing business with Cook County and doing business with the city of Chicago. Uh, obviously, your reputation now precedes you. People know that you're a get it done person. Does that make it easier for you to get those folks to come out and listen? Or are they still intimidated about coming out and hearing what's really going on from the small businesses directly? You know, I, I find that those policymakers who are very active, not afraid and want to make a change, have no problem coming out right mm -hmm. away. Uh, I think one of the initial connections I had with the mayor, now the current mayor of the city of Chicago, was on his listening tour, one of the things he was very eager to know is what are the challenges of the small businesses? What needs to be done? What can be changed? And then he wasn't afraid to just take that information, but to take those suggestions and put programs in place that allows us to do our job easier. Sometimes you have to move certain things to see if things aren't, aren't working right mm -hmm. so you can get to the root of the problem. And you need policymakers who are in tune to that aren't scared to make from the traditional run and make some changes so that you can put programs in place, processes in place. Because Bruce, you know, it's uh, one of the challenges is that in this minority game, there is a process of which I don't think we were educated on how to get, in, how to get engaged, how to take advantage of it, how it works. That's opened up now. Mm. So, with anything, with learning and growth, it's making it a, a real exciting, getting things done, people finding their way, getting their legs under them. And you can see it evident in the community and the programs that an organization like Chatham Business Association can bring to the businesses. Well, one of the successes you had makes me think of something, you know, the, the people say, well, if you really want to do something, give me some money. Because, <laughs> because I, you know, I, I got the business all hooked up, but I need some money. And I happen to be in a meeting with you and in this program where people were talking about micro lending mm -hmm. and you know it's it's no panacea it's no <sighs> perfect kind of situation but of all the people to be funded in this effort two of the people came out of your efforts in chatham 
One, the wonderful Flex Coffee, yes. which we all love. It's just a great, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful business. It's, it's wonderful. It's something that's been needed in the community for so long. Mm -hmm. And yet with these two stellar entrepreneurs, I mean, when I heard the background of Flex Coffee and the other young lady that was the engineer, the, engineer, yes. the challenges that they had getting financed, you can uh, if you don't finance them, who, who, who are you going to finance? <laughs> I, know, I mean, I money in the bank, background, education, contracts. They've done all the right things. Done all the right things and cannot get the time of day from our traditional financial institutions. So wh what does that say about the environment that exists right now? I mean, we, we've got banks on every corner. Mm -hmm. They pop up left and right. But when you go to them to support our small businesses, then they go run and hide just like you turned on the lights uh, and something else. And banking is a business. I mean, if you keep in mind, the banks were just bailed out by regulators. Yeah. And if I loan you money and you get in trouble, and then I have to loan you money to get out of trouble, I'm going to have a lot to say on who you loan to. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily do great for the community. I can say that the banks have been very active in our micro lending program because they want not only to loan to the businesses, but they use it as an avenue to make sure that we can do what we need to do on the technical side to get businesses ready to take that relationship from a micro loan mm -hmm. to a bank. We have banks and you know, I'm, um, our board of directors is, uh, has quite a few fine banking financial mm -hmm. institutions on there. Fifth Third, PNC, Seaway Bank, uh, Urban Partnership Bank participates in this. And what they do is donate loan offices to us. What that helps us do with this micro loan, which is more like a, carry out, a carrot Mm -hmm. helps the business loans as you heard the two young ladies she had two contracts in hand yes hefty contracts and was employing african-american engineers from our community mm -hmm. and was unable to get financing but this will build a bridge and it also makes her help her present her company in a more bankable form so that she can take this micro loan and leverage it over to improve a banking relationship because it's got to be two two mm -hmm. components you have to fit into the profile of the bank. You've got to pick the bank that wants you as a customer because again, they're in the business of doing banking. So it allows us to kind of segue into that and not have them go out of business before they get to that point. And that was the micro loan mm -hmm. initiative of us getting that done. Now, now speaking of that, and, and this is uh, probably another weight that's on your shoulders because like you said, growing up, Chatham was Chatham. So this is soft is, this yeah. is Johnson Products, this is Independence Bank, this is Seaway Bank, this is Robbins Insurance. These are all these legacy businesses. And yet now people wonder, where are the mentors? Where are the leaders? Where are the people that can show me the ropes? And the one thing that I think is the most tragic element of doing business in Chicago is Chicago always projects this I got mine, you get yours, you know. <laughs> I figured it out, you go figure it out. But you've tried to say, wait a minute, that's not what it's all about. The, the big guys got to show the medium-sized guys, and medium-sized guys got to show the little guys. Mm -hmm. And so every month on the second Tuesday, you try to get the people together, and yet it, it's free. <laughs> Come to the meeting, learn, link up, meet up, network. Why is it so hard to get people to come out and build the kind of community that you've been trying to build for five years of getting people to work with each other? Well, I, I think, Bruce, it's a, it's a lot of challenges. It, some of them you just previously stated. One of the good things that benefits about Chatham is that we're fully supported in those membership meetings. Our micro loan day, people come out and again, they participate. Um, our challenge is going to be, uh, in my opinion, We've gone from fighting the moral right for racism, and now we're in this economic battle, which is a little different mm -hmm. because it, it, it crosses the lines of just color and right and wrong. It has to do with being able to be economically engaged. Any business now that is not, so the, the forefathers that we know that created the wealth, mm -hmm. the Salshines, you know, if they did it in this day and time, it might look a little different with technology added to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody has to reinvent themselves. Everybody has to get into the global market. Everybody has to change. You know, there's little different niches now that you can get. We're, we're, you know, we're in the middle of making a transportation hub. Mm -hmm. So companies that you and I, or that our forefathers built wealth on, 
will look totally different today and that's okay. Mm. In addition to that succession planning, uh, those successful business owners created some very successful businesses that created some great generational youth who now are gonna do and are doing different things and that's mm. okay. The connection we have to do is take that same mentorship regardless of our bloodline and do it with our youth. Create those jobs, create those mm -hmm. uh, opportunities, create that spirit that Chatham, I think, was famous for, which was cultivating that entrepreneurial spirit. Yes, right, right. So that is the succession plan. That's, I think, the, the key to Chatham's success. It was created by very successful businessmen. We haven't lost that mission, haven't lost that flavor. We recognize that mentorship, working together is key, and, and it's, it's, it's working for us. So it, so, so, so speaking of that then, it's important for people to know that CBA isn't just about Chatham, right. that people can be a part. You, you've really created something with your tech center. Uh, I am so uh, proud of <laughs> the work that you and your team have been doing. You've uh, made Wi-Fi available out in the businesses with the Clear program and the Mobile Citizen. You've been teaching Google and QuickBooks, and you got a tech lab that's now going on its second generation. So people need to recognize that this can be an asset for wherever you are. Mm -hmm. You need to come out and be a part of this network, this rebuilding, and not just say, yeah, these are these guys out there on 79th Street or 87th <laughs> Street. But this is really a resource for our entire community to come together and to be a part of the kind of things because you're out there shaking the tree trying to get people to pay attention to us mm -hmm. not just Cottage Grove but pay attention to us as black entrepreneurs wherever we are <laughs> we've got to come out and be supportive of that so let's talk a little bit about as, as we wrap this up today how can people get involved what can they do how do they get in touch with you to start being aware of your programs and taking advantage of the technical assistance that the CBA provides well, I'm glad you asked that. First of all, I think the first step, hopefully, is through the website, mm -hmm. cbaworks.org, where you can get any of our events. Come by, as you mentioned, our free monthly membership meetings. We have quarterly mix and mingles. Again, there, there's no charge to get in. The whole point is to put the policymakers. We have a great network of other organizations who work with us. So say our friends in Andersonville who come over and bring some of the best practices. And if you look at Andersonville and 79th Street, a lot of similarity right. there, exactly a right. lot of growth path. Mm -hmm. So when we have, when we're fortunate to be a CBA, those partners come together and say, you know, this works best for us. Can we, sh and we exchange that information. So um, working with the city, there's not too much that if we can articulate it, look at the process and it's not working and doesn't help that community and I want to say the southern region and what we find is that if it's not working on the south side, south side it's not working on the north side mm -hmm. or the west side. Uh, it's the collaborative effort that um, is just I think makes Chatham and the organization what it is. So first they should go to our website. Okay and what's the website again? CBA Works. C -B -A CBA works. works for Chatham Business Association works with an S W O R K S because right. we work for you. <laughs> dot org. Right. So it's CBA Works dot org. If you go to the calendar, you'll see our events, those meetings. Mm -hmm. I think that would be the best place. I always ask, come out, have breakfast with us. You know, we have informative uh, presenters. We have engaging conversations. Uh, we talk about things that are relevant to the small business community. And, and, Start and, there. And when you call CBA, somebody answers the phone. Yeah. You have a great and wonderful, you wouldn't be sitting in this chair now if it wasn't for your that office staff manager. Is, that is, <laughs> is, uh, she you is know, great. It, it just, so, so, so people don't think this is a one, uh, a, a one woman no, show. No, it is you not. You have a complete team. Who are is, committed to the community and so committed talented, to the work so, from so talented. Somnia to Carletta to Aisha to Cherie to Richard who does, our, who does our micro lending. And they all care about being successful and responding to those businesses. As you heard at the uh, round table, mm -hmm. We want to make sure we don't do a welfare line. We don't want you sitting in there waiting. We want you in and out. We want to ask you once for your documentation, and we want to get you on your and way. And what's the phone number? Our phone number is 773-994-5006. Okay. Well, you heard it from the, the lady herself. And October 8th is our next meeting. They should October come out. October 8th. So look, every Tuesday, 
Every Tuesday at what? 8 o'clock, 8.30? Second Tuesday a month. Second Tuesday every month uh -huh. over at the, the South Central Community right off of 83rd. And Ellis. And Ellis. It's a wonderful meeting. You get a free breakfast. <laughs> if you don't want to do nothing else, come out and eat. But I guarantee you, you'll walk away with some knowledge and some contacts. And if you don't get but any card in one of these meetings, you better get Melinda Kelly's card. Please do. We would love to have you. <laughs> because she's the person that you need to know. Getting businesses going. There's a revival going on in our communities on Cottage Grove, on 87th Street. We've got entrepreneurs out there that are really making a difference. And they're making a difference because they're sticking together and making sure that uh, we, we can win as a win-win team. And CBA is a team that you want to be on. I want to thank Melinda Kelly for being here. I want to thank you for watching this edition of Technology Access Television. My name is Bruce Montgomery. We'll see you next time.